Today, I'm reacting to this Australian accent tutorial from the Joel and Leah YouTube channel. These guys, I believe, are actors from Great Britain and did this video a long time ago. Well, a long time ago, last year. But my wife used to use this channel in order to learn English. So, I'm looking forward to doing this. Let's get into it. Hi, we're Joel and Leah. Yeah, and today we're going to be talking about some of our favourite Australian terms. Now, you might notice that our accents aren't exactly the same as they usually are. We've actually been living in Australia throughout lockdown and we decided that we'd keep it a top secret. Exactly. Until this moment. They sound both British to me. Oh, we're living in Melbourne, Australia. Oh, he said Melbourne. Well, good job. Good job, Joel. I assume his name is Joel and that that's Leah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed I got that right. So they're down under. How cool is that? We just thought we'd start the video like that because we love doing the Australian accent. We're, we're always doing an Australian accent. They did an Australian accent? Hold on. Let me hear that again. Now you might notice that our accents aren't exactly the same as they usually are. We've actually been living- yeah, You might notice. That was very British at the start, but then he nailed the usually are. Now you might notice that our- Yeah, I would never say notice. It's almost the emphasis too. I'd say notice. Notice. But he said notice. Interesting. Let's do it again and have a listen to that usually are because I think he crushes that. Now, you might notice that our accents aren't- Accents, he said more like a New Zealander. Accents. Accents. Now, you might notice that our accents- Accents. Aren't exactly the same as they usually are. Ooh, usually are. Crush that. He absolutely crushed that. That sounded very Aussie. Let's have a listen to Leah. We've actually been living in Australia throughout lockdown and we decided that we'd keep it a top secret. Decided. 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 How would I say that differently? Because I can hear it, but I, I don't know how I pronounce it differently. We've actually been living in Australia throughout lockdown and we decided that- Yeah, I can hear a British sort of twang in there. Decided. We decided. I think it's the I. I did instead of I did. Decided versus decided. I think it's further back in the mouth, that I sound and opening it up. I actually just noticed too, she's pronouncing the I sound instead of a schwa for the ED ending on decided. So she's saying decided instead instead of decided. Decided, decided. So it's almost sounding a little New Zealander there too. They did sort of okay, I guess. I still definitely hear that they're both British, but some parts of it, they absolutely smashed. So man, if they keep that up, they're gonna be spies in no time. Keep, we'd keep it a top secret. Exactly. Until this moment. So here we are. And that too, that until this moment, that is very, very British. I don't think I would ever say this moment. This moment. With that kind of emphasis or pronunciation, this moment. So here we are. We're living in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> okay. <not>. Guys, <laughs> we just thought we'd start the video like that because we love doing the Australian accent. Now you can hear the British accent come through more clearly. We're always doing an Australian accent. And right. so we thought, let's just do an accent video using our Australian accents. We'll say some Australian words and phrases. You guys can join in. Yeah. So this video might move between Australian and our natural accents. And yeah. that's absolutely fine. It is. Because we set the rules. We do. Yeah, we're the boss of this channel, so we're the bosses. Sorry, born and bred. Born and bred in Surrey, that's a lie. You that were born in Warwickshire. I was born in Warwickshire and I've been living in Melbourne. Melbourne, of course. Something interesting there. Leah said Melbin, I think, a little bit more with that I vowel sound, Melbin. No, she didn't, Pete. She said Mel Ben, not Mel Bin. Melbourne, Melbourne. Still not how we would pronounce it. We'd say Melbourne. We would use the schwa for the O-U-R-N-E part of the end of the word with N at the end, right? So we would say Melbourne, Melbourne, not Melben. So it doesn't sound like Ben. It sounds like Ben, Ben, Melbourne. And I think Joel got it. I think he said it pretty well. Sorry, born and bred. Born and bred in Surrey. That's a lie. You that were born in Warwickshire. I was born in Warwickshire and I've been living in Melbourne. Yeah, Melbourne. She's... I think going a little over the top, Melbourne instead of Melbourne. And we would use the dark L quite often. We would say Melbourne, Melbourne. Melbourne, of course. He crushed it. Joel got it. Now, this is what I was going to say. So, when we were in America- Something you'll notice here that separates their accents, which are sort of, again, this is where I'm showing my ignorance, receive pronunciation kind of British accents. They won't be completely, they'll have their own sort of regional differences, but I can hear the glottal T being used at the ends of words where he's stopping it in his throat, whereas Australians would stop it in their mouths and mute the T in their mouths with the tongue. He's doing it, and I think Lee's doing it in her throat as well. Let's have another quick listen. It's a lie. You were born in Warwickshire. I was born in Warwickshire and I've been living in Melbourne. Melbourne, of course. Now, this is what I was going to say. 
you hear him say it there, what, what I was going to say instead of what I was going to say or what I was going to say. Now, this is what I was going to say. I'd muted in my mouth. What, 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 what? He mutes it in his throat. Now, this is what I was going to say. And that is a big characteristic of received pronunciation from Great Britain. What, what instead of what, what. And I've been living in Melbourne. Melbourne, of course. Now, this is what I was going to say. What I was going to say. What I was going to say. Now, this is what I was going to say. So, when we were in America, yeah. all the time, American taxi drivers and Uber drivers would be like, oh, Australian or British. And we'd, and we'd be, be like, like Australian. Because it's more fun. <laughs> it is so much fun. They'd be like. It's so funny how they nasalize the Australian and <laughs> really turn it on. Australian. 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 That's interesting. They can probably fool other foreigners, people from the US, pretty easily because jumping from received pronunciation to Australian pronunciation, there are only a few changes that you really need to make with the consonants. They're both non rhotic, and then you just have to sort of learn the diphthongs, the vowels really well, and you know, you'll nail it. But it'd be interesting to see how other Australians go listening to this because I'm sure they'll spot it a mile away. Australian. Because it's more fun. It is so much fun. They'd be like, oh, I thought so. And we were like, <laughs> he did it again. Oh, I thought. So I thought so. I thought so. Thought so. So that's really interesting. The glottal T in the throat. Yeah, it's and then so they'd be, and then they'd ask us where I'm from, and then they'd know something about the area. Yeah. Obviously, we were lying, and then we were like, we've got to go ahead. We've got to just. She just did it too with the got a got a. We got a we got a Jess. We got a Jess. We've got to go ahead. We've got to just. We've got to go ahead. We've got to just. We got a Jess. We got a Jess. That's very. I mean, and I'm overdoing it. Okay, so you know, again, judging their Australian accent, they are more than welcome to judge my British accent, which is atrocious. But the glottal stop in the throat is a characteristic difference between Australian English and received pronunciation. Let's go through some of these um, Australian quotes and phrases for, for fun. Okay. Uh, okay. So they're going to be doing quotes and phrases. So this be interesting so these phrases are positive phrases so i um, we've heard of some of them but not all of them okay and most australians are really into positivity they are they're so positive and the first one they might say if something's really cool or really awesome they might say bloody ripper <laughs> you little bloody ripper <laughs> bloody ripper just means wow that is so awesome yeah that is so cool that's very true so bloody we use just like the brits i'm not sure if americans really use bloody very often but it is sort of an exclamation right it's a politer way of using other words like the f-bomb to emphasize something bloody great fat carpet snake bloody hell bloody rat bag ripper is aussie slang for something awesome so if something is a ripper it is an amazing thing oh man that thing is a ripper so we can emphasize that even further and say man that thing is a bloody ripper what a bloody ripper mate what a bloody ripper you little ripper <laughs> thanks lads mm -hmm. bloody ripper bloody ripper bloody. and see how they're nailing the ah uh at the end of the word ripper right so we use the vowel sound ah uh when words end with E-R, O-R, R-E, A-R, you'll know the drill if you've seen this video up here on my channel. But received pronunciation from Great Britain will often use the schwa, so they would say ripper, ripper. Ripper, ripper. Instead of ripper, ripper. Ripper. Exactly. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> Australian phrases, I think, are my favourite of all the English-speaking phrases. Yeah. I mean, the I, best ones. Mind you, I've never heard any of them ever say that. Oh, but, really? Yeah. I, I've heard it when they're like fishing or something and there's a huge fish and they're like, it's a bloody ripper. <laughs> bloody ripper. Really? Yeah. <laughs> While they're reeling it in. <laughs> That's it. Every Australian must say those words when pulling a fish in. Otherwise, the fish just escapes off the line. Oh, my God. I got a bloody ripper here. I'm going to land it. I'm going to land the bloody ripper. Bloody ripper. Right. Next one is too easy. Too easy. Too easy, mate. Again, I haven't heard this one, I don't think. Really? It says, when I heard this for the first time, I was buying a bottle of wine and he said it as he was handing me my change. I thought it was a complaint. Maybe I should have made it more <laughs> challenging for him. <laughs> no way, no way. Too easy is a way of replying, you're welcome. We would use this all the time. Like, I've done something for you and you're saying thank you. And then I reply, too easy. It's like the thing was so easy. It's not even a problem. Too easy. Have a good day. Too easy. It's, you don't even have to thank me for it. Like it was such a simple, easy thing. It was too easy, in fact, that it's just not a big deal. So it's us diminishing whatever it is that you're thanking us for saying, no problem, no worries. You don't have to thank me. But we often say, oh, too easy, too easy. Too easy, mate. So next time you do something for someone and they say back to you, thanks, you can say, oh, too easy. 
Too easy, mate. No worries. Too easy. So he's handing you the changes. He's like, too easy. But he's meaning, sure, no problem. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Something interesting here. I don't know if they did it or not, but when I'm saying too easy, too easy, you're going to get that ooh vowel sound. I'm overdoing it there. Ooh, ooh, too, too, too. And I'm going to link it to the long E sound in the word easy using a small W kind of sound. So effectively what we have is a vowel where the lips are closed in, ooh. And as the lips open up and go to the next vowel, it sounds like you're linking them with a W sound. Too wheezy, too easy, too easy. So check out the video up here on linking sounds in Australian English. We use the W sound, the Y sound and the R sound a lot to link vowels. Meaning sure, no problem. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Yeah, because you'd think like- they're, they're not doing it. They're saying too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Not too easy. Too easy. Too easy. easy. Yeah, because you'd think like, oh, that was too easy to buy the alcohol. You look yeah. a bit underage and then you're making all these assumptions as a Brit. So yeah. like, what's going on? <laughs> But he's saying like, if you're like, oh, thanks so much. They're like, no, nah, too, too, too easy, too easy. Too easy, sure, no problem. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's good. Oh, and now the next one, no worries, is the same as too easy. No worries. No worries. No worries. No so worries. We say no worries in the UK, don't we? Never knew that. Didn't realise that uh, Brits say no worries as well. That's a very quintessentially Australian. I wouldn't even say it's a slang term. It's just an expression that we use all the time. No worries. No worries. If someone does something and gives you something and you're like, thanks, they may then say, oh, no worries. No problem. Not to worry. And we can take it a step further and use the, I don't know what it is. We sort of elongated this phrase and then contracted it back down to turn from no effing worries to no wacky furries to just no wackers. So if you want to say, if you want to use slang, the a slang version of no worries, you can just say no wackers. Ah, oh, no wackers, but it's very informal. Do you phrases back to back to each other? Like no worries, too easy, no worries. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You could say that. You could say, oh, yeah, no worries. Too easy. Too easy. No worries. <laughs> it's not that funny. It's just what we say. Like, no worries. Too easy. No worries. Why know. is that good? It's so <laughs> funny. I also love the meme that's like, for someone who says no worries a lot, I sure am filled with a lot of worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no worries. No worries. Oh, let me just crying. go cry into my pillow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the next, yeah, beauty or beaut. <laughs> you little beauty. <laughs> How'd you like that, eh? Isn't that a beauty? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send you some photos. But yeah, I've taken, I've taken some beauties. I'll let them finish shortly, but this ties in with Ripper. If something is a beauty, it's a beautiful thing. And so it is an awesome thing. It's a great thing. So if my son and I go fishing when he's old enough to go fishing and he pulls in a huge fish and he says, oh, bloody Ripper, and gets it up on the pier or on the dock or into the boat and I see this huge fish, I might say, oh man, what a little beauty. What a beaut. So it's an amazing fish. It's a great fish. It's an awesome fish. What a little beauty. What a beauty. What a beaut. The deputy's got me a beauty. That would be beaut. Right, next one. Richie did. Bridgie Deej. Is that like a disco, like, Bridgie Deej? <laughs> Bridgie Deej. What does that one mean? No, this one just means uh, real or genuine and not fake. <laughs> oh, nice. Bridgie Deej. This is a funny one. Everyone knows this, I think, down under, but you're not going to hear it used very often. There may be some people who use it as sort of a, I don't know, a bit of a laugh. No, I'm being Bridgie Deej. But in the, my circle of Australian friends, I don't hear them using this very often in a serious sort of manner of being like, yeah, he's Ridgy Didge or that thing's Ridgy Didge. I would usually say maybe fair dinkum. Like, oh, oh is that a fake Gucci? No, that's Ridgy Didge. Ridgy Didge. <laughs> that's so cool. That's amazing. Especially like my recently bought some fake knockoff sunglasses whilst I was away. And I can't wait to just be like, these are Ridgy Didge. These are Ridgy. <laughs> Something else just stuck out like a sore thumb there, and it was the emphasis that Leah gave Ridgy Didge. She said all the syllables equally. These are Ridgy Didge. Ridgy Didge. Ridgy Didge. Whereas Australians would say Ridgy Didge. I think we would put most of the emphasis on Didge here. No, I'm being Ridgy Didge. These are Ridgy Didge. These are Ridgy Didge. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be some of your tips. If someone was like, I want to do an Australian accent, yeah. is there a certain, is there one thing that you would say? I would Bear just be mind. like, think about the A sound, and I'm like, okay. right. Oh, sorry, it's I, but I feel like that's more mm. A. So think about the word right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Do you not feel like right. it's like R A? Yeah. Rah. 
It's a right. Yeah. Right. It's funny how different people hear different sounds when they talk about the I sound in Australian English. And again, this is going to depend on the general versus the broad accent. The broader it is, the more it's going to become nasalized and you'll hear something like right. Right. Right now. Right now. Is that right? Is that right? Some people will say it sounds like oi, and other people will say, obviously, it sounds like a. I I don't hear either. I just hear I. 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 Okay? So, right. Right. So, it's I. 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 Right. Right. Night. Light. I. Is that right? Is that right? I want everything to be right. I want everything to be right. If you overdo these kinds of things, that's where people are going to spot you a mile away. And I think that's where native English speakers from Britain, from Ireland, from America, from Canada trying to do an Australian accent often get caught. They just go overboard. Right. Or right. Okay. So, try and tone it back. Make it a little more subtle. Right. Right. Like elongate it a bit. Yeah. So, I always try to go through the vowels of any accent and then Mm. try and think how they would say the vowels. So, Mm -hmm. we would say A-E-I-O-U. Yeah. I guess in an Australian accent, it would be A E I O U. A E I O U. I think these guys are confusing general versus broad, and they're sort of leaning towards the broad end of it where they might say A E I O U. But again, the way that I'm doing that, A E I O U. A E I O U. It's just nasalization, really, that I'm putting over the top of my normal accent to change the quality of those vowel sounds. A E I O U. That's a general accent. A broader accent might be A E I O U. Yeah. O <laughs> and U are very different as well. Aren't they? He's nailing O and U. My God. I, 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 got, the, I got the A wrong. I didn't think I did the A did. very well. I, I think A is similar to ours, like A. That was good. Interesting, you might notice how he says ours. So, I would say ours as in our thing, right? And I change the quality of it. Like the, the vowel sound can change if I'm enunciating more. Our versus our. Ow. They said it slightly differently, or I think Joel said it slightly differently here. I think A is similar to ours. Like- ours. 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 We have that vowel sound in Australian English, but we would never use it for that word. Ours. Not ours. Really interesting. A. That was good. Yeah. A-E-I-O-U. Yeah. And U is so- He's doing pretty well. He's nasalizing quite well, if that's a word, nasalizing. He's pushing it back into the mouth and up the nose. That's where I sort of place it, where I feel it. It's it's up here, but sort of in a bit at the back of the mouth. A E I O U. So funny. Why you does is- it feel like it's a bit Northern Irish you. when they're like yo? Because it's almost <laughs> like they add another Y onto the end of it. Instead of you, it's you. Yeah, and in Northern Irish, they're like yo. Yo. You, you, yo. Yo for the Northern Islanders is, is closer to the front of the mouth. You, you for me, I place that sort of you, you, you. It's still at the front, but it's a bit further back. You, you, and man, Joel is doing really, really well. You. Yeah. Okay. Also, I feel like the intonation really helps. So, knowing that Australians tend to go up at the end of sentences. When t- that sounded like a New Zealander. Sentences. 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 Uh, we would say sentences. Sentences, not sentences. You, it's you. Yeah, and in Northern Irish, they're like, yo. Yo. <laughs> you. <laughs> you. Yeah. Also, I feel like the intonation really helps. So, knowing that Australians tend to go up at the end of sentences. It's the last vowel, sentences. That's what's doing it instead of sentences, sirs. So, instead of the schwa sound, he's saying is, us, is. The end of sentences Aye. when they're talking, yeah. even when they're not asking questions, that also really helps. Yeah, they definitely go up. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. So, I- so they're talking about up talk. And this is where you end every sentence with an upwards intonation. So I'll show you an example of someone who does this all the time. He's an Australian comedian named Aaron Chen. I got a Fitbit, classic challenge, 10,000 steps. Too easy for me. Set myself a different challenge, a little bit harder. Only allowed 20 steps. Tell me in a comment below, guys, do do we tend to inflect at the end of sentences? Those, those are two good tips. So, go the through the vowels and go up at the end of the sentences. Yeah. And just start there and just practice it. Because... Yeah, we just did it around each other and we just all watch the same shows. Exactly. And Joel loves Neighbours. Yes, I love Neighbours. Bloody Neighbours, that's such a stereotype because the Brits export some Australian TV like Neighbours and Home and Away. So, they tend to know a lot about suburban Sydney and Melbourne. <laughs>
was the last so time good. you watched Neighbours years ago? Years ago, I haven't watched for Neighbours, everybody loves good neighbours Neighbours, everybody needs good neighbours Years and years Years and years? I'd still say years That's years not true and Years yeah. and years <laughs> Dummy. So this is a negative word for people, and it says it's word, it's if someone spits the dummy, then yeah. they're like throwing a hissy fit. Spit the dummy, like have a tantrum. Having a tantrum, having a tanty, spitting the dummy. So the idea is that when a baby <laughs> spits the dummy or pacify, if you want to be American, spits that dummy out of their mouth, they then tend to cry and rage up. Get angry, have a hissy fit, have a tantrum, they spit the dummy. A winner was announced, and then the losers could spit the dummy and demand a formal vote. So that's a very common expression in Australia that you can use on anyone, young or old, if they get angry about something that you think is probably not justified, and it's kind of a little belittling. So if you were to say to someone, don't spit the dummy, you're kind of comparing them to a child. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! <laughs> so be wary of that, but yeah, it's common. We all use it, every single Australian, every Every single Australian uses that phrase. <laughs> Most of us. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, this drongo. I love that. So, this is a type of bird. The drongo is the Kalahari's greatest trickster. And these are his victims. The Chris Lilly, one of his characters always says it. Oh, yeah. Do you remember it? Chris Lilly is a really funny actor in Australia and he is really good with coming up with completely different characters. He's been in TV shows where he acts as small children, different people of different races, women when he's a man, obviously. I'm not even bragging, but me and my friends are all pretty much quiche. If you don't know, quiche is a word that I made up. And it yeah. means, it basically means hot, but like, it's a step above hot. No, it's like yeah. more than just hot. And he's gotten some flack for some of these characters, but yeah, he's, he's very... Very, very talented when it comes to changing his accent and pronunciation and putting on these characters. He's he's great. Check him out. Angry Boys. Well, who and says what's it? The latest one. Uh, latest one oh, is. What is it called? Oh, the one where he plays the YouTuber and yeah. all of that. Oh, and yeah. she was like going crazy. And she's like, "Oh, the Drongos are looking at me, and the Drongos they got cameras in their eyes." And it's like so funny. I never knew oh what a Drongo gosh. was. So a Drongo is an idiot, a moron. You know, it's kind of a a cuter, politer way of saying a moron or an idiot, right? Ah, oh, he's a bit of a Drongo. You know, he's a bit silly, he's a bit stupid, bit of a Drongo, right? Very Australian. Pronunciation-wise, let's have a look at his little Australian phrase here that he says. Oh, he's a bit of a Drongo. Crazy. She's like, "Oh, the Drongos are looking at me." So I think he's made the long E vowel sound a bit more like a diphthong like A looking at May instead of looking at me. Oh, the drongos are looking at me. Again, focus on nasalization if you want to give yourself a broader quality kind of Australian accent. Don't necessarily turn long vowels or short vowels into diphthongs themselves. Just focus on making all the different vowels more nasal. Like, oh, the drongos are looking at me. Oh, the drongos, they've got cameras in their eyes and it's like so funny. But when someone does something stupid, they're like, oh, you're such a drongo. <laughs> Why'd you put your laptop on the barbecue, Wayne? <gasps> oh, I don't know if they should have used that as an example. Why? Because, like, I think Australian people don't like to constantly be associated with barbecues. That's like, it's true. a bit racist. What? Racist? We love Barbie. What we don't like is people using the phrase, chuck another shrimp on the Barbie. Good day, mate. <laughs> Let's put another shrimp on the Barbie. It's a prawn. <laughs> Not a shrimp. But yeah, we got no problem with Barbies. I don't think if you're the same race as us, I don't think it's going to be considered racist. Like shrimp on the Barbie. Yeah, like yeah. it's okay to make fun like of an accent, but then as soon as you like associate it with something, I just feel like that's the wrong way to go. Oh. I wouldn't worry about it too much, guys, to be honest. Don't, don't worry. Australians have thick skins. This oh. article should not have used the barbecue <laughs> example. Although it can't be racist because Australians aren't a race. Oh, okay, so, fair. But They're not prejudice. Racist. Prejudice. <laughs> prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. maybe culturally insensitive. That's a better go. word. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We can handle it, guys. We can handle it. We like jokes. Blood jar. Oh, we're on all the negative words now. Negative. Blood jar. Blood jar means completely lazy, good for nothing couch potato. <laughs> That's true. Blood jar. Okay, a blood jar is like someone who's lazy. That's true. And we often use this in the phrase doll blood jar. It's the biggest threat to your existence. Doll bludgers. Which is very negative, And you wouldn't usually use this on someone who is actually a doll bludger. But a doll bludger, someone is on the doll bludging. 
right? We can turn that noun into a verb. It is where they are receiving money from the government and not working. And usually a dull bludger is someone who actively tries to not work in order to stay on money from the government. So a bludger too is just used for someone who's effectively lazy. If I'm at school and I'm working really hard in French class to do something to do my work and there's someone else who just copies all my notes, I'd say he's a bludger. I'd say he's bludging. He's stealing my notes. He's bludging off me. What a bludger. Yeah, I was dating a bludger for years. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't date bludgers. No, honestly, I yeah, was. Were. I was thinking about it weirdly this morning. I just I hope he's like... not watching this video and then he's like, am I the bludger? <laughs> yeah, I dated a bludger. I like how they edit something out there. <laughs> Maybe she named him. Oh, like, Such I, a bludger. I well, lived with a bludger. Yeah. And like, he used to just be really messy, but it just never bothered me. Bludging too has this essence of taking from others, kind of using others, this kind of parasitic essence, I feel, at least for me. If I were to say, yes, yeah, someone's he's a bludger, it's kind of like, I think that's probably associated with the term doll bludger, where you're effectively doing that off the government. But if I was living with another person, you know, in my younger years where I was in a share house and there was a bludger, the idea would be maybe he's taking my food or he doesn't pay the rent on time. He's effectively using you know, resources that aren't his, uh, his bludging. He is a bludger. Yeah. You're I was like, just like, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. And he'd be like, sometimes he just wouldn't brush his teeth. And I did think that was disgusting. Mm. I don't know if that's a bludging thing though. That may just be poor hygiene. Mm. But I was just never going to be like, brush your teeth. Should have been. because you're too nice. I would <laughs> like, if you want to kiss these sugared lips, <laughs> you need to brush if your you teeth. Wanna if, you wanna kiss, if you want to kiss these sugar lips. If you want to get this candy, you got to <laughs> <laughs> you just turned into Gemma Connor. Yeah. I think you'd just say, clean your f***ing teeth. <laughs> One more positive phrase and okay. then it'll be all right. Yeah, let's end on something positive. She'll be right. <laughs> She'll be right. She'll be right. She'll be right. She'll be all right, I reckon. She'll, She'll be, be right. right. Everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. She'll, She'll be, be right. right. She'll be right. Yeah, She's maybe they wouldn't say the T at the end, right? Yes. She'll be right. See, he just muted it in his mouth. He saw his tongue go up and say right instead of saying right using the uh, glottal T. Have another look. Don't worry. She'll, She'll be, be right. right. She'll be right. He did it there with his throat. Yeah, She's maybe they wouldn't say the T at the end, right? Did it there with his tongue. Very clever. She'll be right. It's nothing to do with a she either. It's just no. in general. You can talk about things as a she. Yeah. So, this is an interesting aspect of Australian English. This is kind of gendered language where she'll be right is definitely associated with men and how men speak. And again, kind of the more authentic, fair dinkum, ridgy didge Aussie guys are more likely to use she'll be right than... Uh, I don't know, some upper class posh rich dude who lives in Turak. That's just my feeling. Women can use this phrase. She'll be right. It's just less common. You're less likely to hear a woman say, oh, yeah, she'll be right, mate, than you will hear an Australian guy say, oh, yeah, she'll be right, mate. She'll be all right, I reckon. All right. Well, I guess that's the video, guys. Um, let me know what you think down below. Do you guys have a good Australian accent? How did you think these guys went? Did they crush it? And if you're learning Australian English and the Australian English pronunciation and accent, make sure to check out this video here. See ya.